We're going to talk about how the constant watching of porn by today's youth impact the way they look at one another, their expectations about sex, and understanding the differences is essential. Joining me from Boston is Dr. Gail Dines, author of Pornland, How Porn Has Hijacked Our Sexuality, and porn star, now director-producer, Stormy Daniel. Stormy is in here with the studio, in the studio with me. And you and I had talked once in the past about when you became a director-producer, you immediately noticed that men and women view pornography for different reasons. Absolutely. Um, most men go straight to the sex scenes. They use it as a quick way to release or get themselves going. Um, they do it for visual simulation, strictly enjoyment. A woman needs a little bit more time warming up. They're more likely to use it as a marital aid. Um, watch it with their spouse or their partner to help get in the mood. Or maybe, strangely enough, I found a lot of women watching some of my newer titles to learn some new tips. Learn, you know, it's a good way to broach the, oh, what would you like to try new? And put something in. And so many women come up to me and ask me about things that they've seen in my movies. Now, you, you said to me once, uh, you, you paraphrased it in a very nice way when I, when I talked to you last time about this. You said men want to see people having sex. Absolutely. Women want to know why those people like each other so much that they want to have sex. Exactly. <laughs> women are definitely more interested in the storyline. Um, a man's perfectly happy to put in a DVD and, and go straight to the sex scene with no lead up. If you put that in next to your wife, chances are she's going to say, I would never bang the pizza delivery guy. Why does she like him so much? Storyline and romance is a lot more important to a woman. Now, Gail, you've studied what pornography has done to not just young people, but maybe everybody and their attitudes about sex and sexuality. What have you found out? Well, first of all, um, let's just talk about the kind of pornography that men are watching. They might be watching this kind of more gentle, softcore-ish pornography when they're with their partners. But what studies show and the industry shows, in fact, is that when men are alone, they're watching gonzo pornography, which is hardcore, in-your-face, brutal, body-punishing, dehumanizing, debasing pornography. This is where you see certain sex acts of choking a woman with a penis, um, spitting on her, calling her a slut, slapping her. And what they find is that when men are alone, this is the pornography they go to. And I, what I have found in my interviews and what studies have found for well over 30 years is that, first of all, pornography shapes the way men think about sexuality. And this is especially the case today because the average age of first viewing pornography is about 11 or 12. When that boy types porn into Google, he comes up with hardcore body punishing sex. He has no history of sex. He's never had sexual experiences for most of them. So this is what he thinks sex is. So today, porn is the most profound form of sex education that exists in our society. Gail, do you think that there's some sort of uh, developmental window during which if a young male is exposed to a certain kind of explicit material, it becomes sort of a preference or something that they seek? You understand what I'm asking? Yes, of course. Well, actually, what's interesting in the studies is it's not actually age that's the key, although we do know that they, obviously the younger they see it, the more uh, they are likely to get habituated to it. What we know is for all ages of men, the more they watch it, the more desensitized they become, the more they want harder and harder porn, and the more they believe the porn story of how the world exists. And the more they expect their partners to behave like that, they think their own bodies are going to behave like that. I can't tell you how many men tell me they're disappointed when they actually have sex because they thought they were going to keep going all night. They thought she was going to have screaming orgasms, and it all looked very boring and bland and vanilla next to what they'd been masturbating. Stormy, to. how do you respond? Uh, I would like to go back a little okay. bit, actually. Um, to the best of my knowledge, there has been no actual evidence found. There have been no studies, so I would like Gail to tell me where um, these studies are, because to the best of my knowledge, that's not true. And I will readily admit that there is lots of gonzo porn out there. There is some hardcore um, sex, you know, that includes deep throating, which she was referring to, and whatever. But that is not the majority of what is watched. If you go back over the last 20, 25 years and look at what the top selling and renting DVD titles are every single year, none of those things are in them. The number one downloaded and viewed movies are movies like Flashpoint from Wicked Pictures or um, Island Fever, Pirates from Digital Playground. Those movies don't contain any of that I, hardcore. I, I think she's what, referring to a niche. Well, I think what she's saying is that men alone. Gail, is that true? Or, and you can no, quote actually, the story, I'm too. No, I'm saying that, uh, Stormy, you need to go and look at Adult Video News, which I'm sure you know what that is, and you need to go to the page where it actually lists the charts of the top selling, renting, that and the most I'm visited website. To. Well, then you're incorrect, because I, I use them in my speak talks the, all the, the time. The number one rented movie every, last year, I believe, was Pirates. No, no, and, probably the number one rented. I'm not disagreeing with that. But I'm saying when you take the top 50, which is they do, 
you've got Gonzo after Gonzo. You've got Stan, John Stagliani. You've got all of these people who are making Gonzo porn, not that type of stuff. I also want to say in terms of the studies, I mean, that's incorrect. There is actually 30 years of studies. There are excellent uh, research studies done. And what's interesting is the weight of the evidence is that it has an effect. Now, you can come out with some rogue study and some junk science that says pornography has no effect. But when you're looking at social sciences and you're looking at the effects, the key is you go to the weight of the evidence. And there is no question that over the 30 years studies that we have had, the weight of the evidence is absolutely beyond, conclu beyond debate now and beyond any analysis that says that porn has no effect. That is simply not true anymore. So I want to give Stormy a chance to have maybe the last word here, <laughs> or one of the last words. No, I just, um, I wanted to make the point that she's quoting these studies and I would like to know where they're coming from because to the best of my knowledge there isn't and she has yet to provide me with where exactly we can find this. And also she had mentioned in some of her research that I read about in her book that p sex offenders are saying that they, get, you know, they watch this, but where is the demographic for the normal, healthy, married couple that uses pornography as a marital aid. Um, well, let's ask Dr. Dines. Do you have a response well, uh, there's to that? Ton Yeah, of course, there's tons of studies. I mean, you just go to some of the psychological journals and there's 30 years. And one of the key um, researchers in the field, for example, is Dr. Neil Malamuth, who did a study about eight years ago looking at, I would say, 50 or 60 of the studies from the last 20 years. So, I mean, it's not like I'm pulling these up from nowhere and making them up as I go along. I mean, there is a, l a real scientific uh, collection of knowledge here about this. I, I will say this is a conversation worth continuing. Maybe I'll bring you guys back to, to continue this conversation because it's an important one.